programs. We're resuming the final candidate interview process for veterans and politics with our lieutenant governor candidates. Uh, let me briefly uh, introduce our panelists so that the candidates know who they are. On my immediate uh, right is Tom Blanchard, who is a Navy veteran, also the president of Veterans Real Estate. Next to him is Mike Angel, founder of Nevada Legal Forums and Tax Services. Next is Amber Guyman. Only do that on the first one. Please tell me. What are the people are just tuning in on the internet? <laughs> no, I'm already underway. Melissa Broadway, political consultant. Um, we also have Jay Giraldi, there he is. And we also have Rowena Crippen, who's the founder of the Shine Family Foundation. Um, the next bank of panelists is uh, Dr. Danielle Dubre, Michael Mazur is a local attorney, Dr. Jasmine Brooks, both a medical doctor and an attorney in Nevada, uh, Brian Bashau, and Officer John Shute Jr. from Metro. Our candidates are each going to be given one and a half minutes to introduce themselves. Uh, we will be adhering to our pretty strict schedule, as you'll hear it is pretty strict. Remind everyone this is an interview, not a debate. There's no question asked after the question is answered. Um, panelists are given 30 seconds to pose their question. Candidates will have one minute to respond unless the question is a yes-no question uh, designated for all candidates, and then every candidate will have an opportunity to answer yes-no. If time allows, we'll have audience members invited to pose questions and or the panel may ask an additional question. Um, not a forum to air personal grievances, so don't. Uh, if a question is too complex and it requires too long of an answer, we may disqualify it. And uh, panelists, again, only can ask their question to one candidate unless it's a yes, no, in which case you can ask it to all candidates. With that, let's start as we did the last time, closest to me, with the one minute and 30 second introduction from Chris Dyer. Hi, my name is Chris Dyer. I'm a uh, Navy veteran and a U.S. Army veteran. Um, I've lived out here in Nevada for 16 years. My wife, who's a Clark County School District teacher, and I are raising our four kids out here. Um, running because I want to encourage the state of Nevada to legalize recreational marijuana use and to end uh, some government agencies that are unnecessary and corrupt, like the Nevada State Athletic Commission and the Nevada Taxi Authority. Uh, that's about it. I'll save you guys some time. Thanks. Yes. Okay, are we ready, Bob? Please. My name's Mike Lowe. I'm a military brat, U.S. Air Force, England, raised by a single mom of five children. <clears throat> I attended uh, local high school, junior high school, and elementary school here in North Las Vegas. We've been in the area about 50 years. Um, uh, my, my big interests and concerns and the reason I'm running is I feel like we've got inferior leadership and we need to make some significant changes in that area. And, uh, and I believe I'm, I'm the person to do that. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mark. My name is Mark Hutchison. I uh, am a third generation Nevadan. Uh, my wife, uh, Carrie, and I have uh, raised our family here. Uh, I have six children, four grandchildren. I'm the product of public education here in Nevada, as are all six of my children. Uh, and I love Nevada, uh, and I think we've got great opportunities and great, uh, great things in store for us. I, uh, I feel like uh, the state of Nevada uh, needs to uh, continue what we have seen progress made over the last several years and pulling ourselves out of a very challenging uh, economic recession. Uh, we've seen some uh, good uh, progress, but uh, as Lieutenant Governor, one of the most important things that we need to focus on uh, in that office is uh, economic development, job growth. Uh, you know, I, I, I spent a session up at the state legislature, and I can tell you, in my view, most problems that are brought before us can be solved by two things, a good job and a strong family. And that's what we ought to be, sort of our overall macro view of life ought to be. Strengthening your families, strengthening job opportunities, giving our people in the state of Nevada opportunities that, uh, that I had when I grew up here, and that we want our children to have and our grandchildren to have. 
I also think we're in an era when uh, the states need to really assert their sovereignty. Uh, the federal government, in my view, uh, is out of control. Uh, the federal government, in my view, controls far too much of our land. Uh, and the state of Nevada, I think, plays an important role in pushing back uh, and asserting the rights of the sovereign state to ensure that we uh, control uh, the destiny of our, uh, our own care and our own uh, citizens. Thank you. Our government has since been a government of the people. It's a government of special interests. I'm here because our children have no future. Anybody that pays attention knows that the people that get elected to the Senate, Assembly, Lieutenant Governor, Governor, it's just a social club of people who aren't like us every day. Why do people want jobs that pay far less than what they need? They herd us around like cattle, and the results are number 15 opportun job opportunities, 50 education, 50 unemployment, 46 health care, 42 state integrity, number one bankruptcies, number two foreclosures, three short sales, one illicit drug use, two suicides, three firearms deaths, four drug overdose deaths. That upsets me and infuriates me that these people sit there year after year and get elected to office, and this is the results year after year. It's time for change. It's time to put people in office who are just like you. My name is Sue Loudon, and I am running for Lieutenant Governor because I feel I'm uniquely qualified for the job. The number one job of Lieutenant Governor is to be the Chairman of Tourism. It's something that I've done. Uh, I've been in the tourism and hospitality industry for 30 years here in Clark County, having been the president of two hotels, one here in Las Vegas and most recently one in Laughlin, Nevada. I stepped away from that position to run for Lieutenant Governor. And uh, even though Harley says that I, I, uh, I'm not going to make that much money as Lieutenant Governor, I walked away from the position because I feel a sense of public service. I feel that it's time for someone from the private sector to step up and to, 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 vote, to devote the time that they know, uh, especially in tourism, and to devote it to the whole state. I don't care where I go, whether it's uh, Elko or Ely or Winnemucca, they all want more tourists. And it's something that I've been uh, doing for 30 years. As I've said, I've sat on the board of Las Vegas events where we brought the rodeo to town, where we brought the World Cup, the International World Cup jumping horses. Most recently brought the Miss America pageant, a nationally televised program here. These are things that need to be done statewide. I look at Cowboy Poetry, for instance, and I think that that should be an A&E special. That should be something on television. That's what the Lieutenant Governor would do. I came here in 1978 for a job. I'm frustrated that our children don't have the job opportunities that I had when I came here, and that my husband came here for a job as well. I'm a proud member of the Catholic War Veterans. I've been accepted in that group because of my time with the USO. I served in Vietnam with the USO and bases around the world. And when I was a state senator, I introduced the um, the bill for your license plates. If any of you have better license plate, time's up. Plate? Time's up. It's because of my bill. Okay, our first panelist question is going to be asked by Tom Blanchard, who is a Navy veteran and president of Veterans Real Estate. Tom? How are you guys all doing? Yeah, great. Um, this question is for Mark. Um, I wanted to help clear up some of the commercials that we start we started to see. Um, can you explain to us what happened with? fighting for Obamacare and going to the Supreme Court and then having to turn around and then vote for the um, Silver State Exchange and why that all happened. In a minute. <laughs> I, got a minute I got a minute to do that. Well, uh, first off, it's, uh, it's inaccurate to say that I voted for uh, Obamacare. Uh, that was a federal law passed in 2010. I'm a state senator elected in 2012. Let's start with that fact. Um, I answered the call of two different Republican governors, fought Obamacare all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court on my own, on my own dime. I, in fact, spent uh, my own money doing that hundreds of uh, my own hours. Um, uh, there have been uh, some who have suggested that I somehow voted for uh, Obamacare. Uh, it's uh, completely false. It's inaccurate. It's wrong. Uh, to start with the fact that the Silver State Exchange was created in 2011 uh, before I even went, to legislature, even went to the legislature. By the way, every Republican uh, in, the, in the House voted for the Silver State Exchange. Um, my, uh, my opponent has pointed out a couple of votes. One, we gave a tax break to businesses that had to comply with the ACA. I think it's a good thing to give a tax break to businesses that comply with the ACA. That's hardly supporting Obamacare. Uh, so it's uh, when, you, when you vote to uh, have facilitators uh, included with the Silver State Exchange, 
Um, you know, every single Republican voted for that. We voted to control our health care in Nevada. So it's completely inaccurate to say that I voted for Obama. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our second question is going to be posed by Mike Angel, founder of Nevada Legal Forums and Tax Services. This is a yes no question. Do you support the union back tax on businesses? No. 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 You're saying the margin tax? Yeah, I support it. No, I do not support it. Thank you all very much. Our next question is going to be posed by uh, Amber Guyman. Yeah, I, I'm a paralegal. Paralegal and there parent. Paralegal. <laughs> and, thank you, Amber. And I'm a parent and I'm also a military spouse. So there you go. Um, I just didn't want it just to be Amber. Um, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, just yes or no question for all of you. Do you support mandatory drug testing for people that qualify for welfare? No. Yes. Um, I think under the right circumstances, I, I, I would. I, I, I'd have to think through all the questions. I'd have to think through the entire thing. Yes or no question. So, you know what? I think that I Yes or no question. I think that I would. Yes or no question. Yes or no question. It's still a yes or no question. <laughs> it's a yes or no question. I'm a lawyer. It, I understand yes or no questions. That's, that, 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 that's, not, yes that's not a yes or no question. You've got to have the circumstances under which. Is some, for example, I mean, is somebody being treated for a disease or, a, or, or, or an ailment that they have to take? Uh, uh, drugs on? Is that an exception? Is this going to be, you know, like a car plant? I am a lawyer. I support the drug testing. Yes or no question. 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 Still an answer? Yes, I do. Okay. Our next question is going to be. Still an answer. Our next question. Our next question will be posed by Melissa Broadway, who is a political consultant. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my question is for Mrs. Loudon. I was wondering if you um, are pro school choice, and everyone talks about being school choice, but if so, how does it actually become something that can be implemented and um, accessible to everyone that is actually a Nevada citizen? I think we need to focus on. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, sir, Harley. That was a question well, for uh, oh, oh, Sue Loudon. Correct? Yes. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So I am for school choice. How it can be implemented? You look at other states that uh, that have the choice, and uh, Arizona, for instance, is doing a really good job of making sure that parents have a choice and they're given vouchers where they can uh, send their children to the schools of their choice. Uh, it would actually save the money if we had that. You know, it would cost us about $10,000 per student uh, for the public school. We could give a voucher for $7,000, which should pretty much cover the cost for any choice of school that uh, a parent would want. I'm a big proponent of charter schools. I just went to the opening of the um, outstanding um, Founders, Academy. Founders Academy, thank you, and that uh, there were hundreds, hundreds of, of uh, parents and children lined up to sign up because they're so hungry to have choices here <coughs> in Nevada. Uh, I would be a, a huge proponent and do whatever it took. Of course, the job of Lieutenant Governor has nothing really to do with choice, but I'd be an advocate for that if there was ever a vote where there was a tie vote. That's one of the times you would vote, uh, and I would vote for choice in every way. The next question will be posed by Jay Giraldi, who is a Marine. Uh, yes, I, I guess this would be a yes or no question for you. <laughs> you didn't learn from me. <laughs> <laughs> this is concerning the uh, Common Core. Um, there is an article actually today in one of the daily um, that uh, there is our, our teachers are actually starting to strike against the Common Core. Um, in teachers in New York High School has uh, fired a shot across the bow. The concept of the, of the Common Core uh, this Thursday actually. Um, it's at Prospect Heights Cadet High School where they're saying enough is enough. They want an opt out movement. Would you be for or against an opt out movement? Uh, for it. <laughs> against the uh, Common Core, like Indiana. I'm uh, against the Common Core uh, to the extent that it requires a top down uh, management of our school system. I think it's a 10th Amendment issue, it's a local issue. This question was are we for opting out, though? Yeah. I just want to make sure uh, yeah. clear oh, that I'm and, for and, opting and, out. And, I'm yeah. not for Common Core. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, opting out. Yeah. Sure. I, mean, I am in, in, in favor of the state. And local governments controlling our education systems. So we got to go opt in or opt out of any of those, uh, any of those uh, provisions. For opting out. For, for opting out. And I'm for opting out. I've signed a petition to say so. 
Okay, I think that was all our candidates agreeing that they support opting out. Uh, no, Isaac, what, Mark, are you opting out? You didn't answer yet. Oh, sure. I, I, I said I, I, I completely support our local school system being able to opt in or opt out. So if you want to opt out, or our local school system want to do that, I can leave a complete control at the local level for schools. Okay. So you very might local. Have to go back to the other side of the Mississippi to find somebody like this. <laughs> I'm not sure. Our next question is going to be posed by Rowena Crypton. She's the founder for the Shane Family. This question is for Mark Hutchinson. Yes. What are your feelings regarding the Second Amendment and gun laws? Well, I'm a uh, life member of the uh, NRA, uh, rated uh, A by the NRA, was recognized in this last legislative session as a leader by the Nevada Firearms Coalition, uh, and I'm a very strong proponent of the Second Amendment. I was stood shoulder to shoulder with Brian Sandoval uh, in opposing SB 221, which in my view would have created a gun registry. So uh, I'm about as a strong supporter of Second Amendment rights as, uh, as anybody can be. Thank you. Our next question will be posed by Dr. Danielle Duperet. Yeah, we'll try a yes or no question. I'm a holistic health doctor. Yes or no to make Nevada a freedom zone for natural health medical tourism? Yes. 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 Yes, I think it would be a great new industry. It worked. I think we're getting them trained. <laughs> Our next question will be posed by Michael Manager, a Las Vegas attorney. Hi. <clears throat> this question is for Sue Loudon. What specifically would you do to try and attract new businesses into Nevada or attract existing businesses to relocate here? And to stay here, first of all, I. Uh, I'm a big proponent of asking all of you to vote against the margins tax, which is also known as the education initiative. Uh, question three, I think that if that passes, we're going to be one of the worst states in the country to do business. So my job, is, even as a candidate, is to let everybody know that this is going to be on the ballot in November, and that's a job killer for Nevada. I believe we have to be a, 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 t a state that um, is a low tax state as far as businesses to attract businesses. When I was in the state senate, one of the main things that I did, not alone, but I did it, you know, as a, I did it as a group when we had a government that signed uh, to privatize workers' compensation. It was one of the main things I ran on in uh, the '93 election was to make sure that we privatized our workers' compensation system. Most, a lot of states have still a, a broken state system. We were bankrupt in our state and we've privatized it uh, back in the 90s, and we have that law now. It's those kinds of initiatives that you need to continue to do for us to be the best, friendliest uh, state that we could possibly be as far as um, taxes and regulations. And I would go out and recruit. Let's try being the fair. There's the candidate that's already been asked a question. Why don't you try asking another one? I'm a leader, I'm not a politician, and I don't play games. Our next question will be uh, posed by Dr. Jasmine Brooks, who is a medical doctor and Nevada attorney. This question is for Sue Loudon. Education is very near and dear to my heart. I'd like to know what your position is on the um, Supreme Court decision in race as an issue in education. Admission. Would you repeat that question, please? I'd like to know what your position is on the Supreme Court's decision on the admission having with race as a factor in admissions for education colleges. Affirmative action. Affirmative action, yes. Well, I'm a former educator. I uh, have a master's degree in education. I have hands-on experience in, in, uh, in the classroom. And someone, if I could uh, also mention, I'm someone who is a big proponent of having a medical school here in Southern Nevada. Someone who, whether I'm gonna be Lieutenant Governor or not, uh, wants to make sure that we have enough doctors in town. And I think the medical school and medical tourism all fit together to have that medical school. But I think that it's unfortunate that children who are applying to schools are not uh, looked upon by their grades and by their worthiness, period, that other factors are entered into it. And I, uh, I was a proponent of, of the young woman who stepped forward to say that she felt that she was discriminated upon, discriminated upon when she didn't get into school. I hope that answers your question. 
Our next question will be uh, posed by Brian Deshant, who is the president of Fallen Not Forgotten and an Army veteran. How you guys doing? Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, this is for everybody, just yes or no. Um, I understand times are tough uh, and it's difficult to find a job, but do you think unemployment should last two years long? Uh, Mr. Dyer, you can go first, please. No. Should be in the after word, but it will, yes. Unemployment compensation insurance should not last two years. Yes. It should not. The next question will be posed by um, Officer um, uh, John Schultz, Jr. Officer Schultz. Uh, again, a yes no question regarding uh, uh, Bill, this should be in the legislature. And uh, do you support a fully trained person, individual citizen, with a CCW to carry their firearm on Nevada, Nevada University campuses, whether they're a student or a professor? I would support open carry. Yes. I support campus carry, yes. 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 And our 12th question is uh, going to be posed by Karen Steelman, who is the Auxiliary Director of Veterans and Politics. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us here today. I would like to know from each of you, simple yes or no, have you, do you support Agenda 21? Start with Ms. Sue Loudon. I, I support that we are. She has her no question. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. No. No. Thank you. Okay. All right. We do have time, so we're going to make another pass through okay. our panel now. So we'll ask each of our panelists to come up with another question under the same set of rules and uh, reset this process with Tom Blanchard, Navy veteran president of the Veterans Real Estate. All right, this is um, all for all you guys. Name one strength that makes you the best candidate. I'm a common guy. I'm just an electrician, regular Nevadan. I don't own a casino and I'm not an attorney. <laughs> I understand where the system is broken and it fixes. I am a constitutional lawyer, and I'm going to tell you right now, the next decade is going to be all about constitutional rights and whether or not someone's going to be able to defend your constitutional rights. And it's a good thing to have the lieutenant governor as a constitutional lawyer who has in the past and will continue to defend your constitutional rights. Accomplishments. I'm a great consensus builder. As I, I'm the chairman of the front town board, and I get things done that I want to talk about. I have the experience to uh, be the chairman of tourism, which is the job of Lieutenant Governor. I had the experience to sit on the Board of Economic Development, having developed companies, made payroll, uh, employed thousands of people. Next question will be posed by Mike Angel, founder of Nevada Legal Forums and Tax Services. Uh, this guess no question. As far as compensation only negotiation, should public employees have a right to negotiate based on pay only? Yes. No. Uh, they have it right now, and yes, they, 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 they do have it right. And they should have it right. Sure, they should continue to have it right. Sure. Yes. If I understand your question right, you're, are you asking public employees, do they have a right to ask for their raises? No. Do you, have, do you believe that? Do, do public employees have, should have a right to negotiate based for their wages? Not working conditions, just wages. Yes. Okay, our uh, next question is going to be asked by a paralegal, parent, <laughs> and military spouse, <laughs> Amber Gunn. This question is for Mr. Little. I, um, you said that the leadership has failed us. What is the biggest failure that you see is the first part of the question, and the second part is which of the of that big failure that you see that you can accomplish changing or the biggest change in if, if you're elected? The, the, the biggest concern I have and where the problem's broken is we no longer differentiate an Article I and Article III courts. Those are our constitutional courts. Under an Article III court, you're a territorial court, which would be anything in the federal government under the domain. You can washboard a Cuban in Cuba on a territory, and that's perfectly fine. 
But as an American citizen, when you're on the states, you're in an Article, uh, an Article Three court, not an Article One court. Consequently, you now have constitutional rights that folks in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands and Cuba don't share. They, they fall under a different constitution preview in terms of the court system. What we have is now uh, a bundling of three branches of government to one administrative branch, which is the fourth branch of government. So when you look at the judicial cancer, which is what we have, you have these attorneys that take us into the courtrooms, and they've rolled the, they, they, they've eliminated the separation of powers. You've eliminated the due process, and you basically now get a judicial process under an Article I court, which is a military court for all practical purposes. And so if, if you can't differentiate those things, then you don't have constitutional rights anymore. So when Mark says constitutional rights, those are found in your Article III courts, not in your Article I courts. Okay, our next question will be posed by Melissa Broadway, political consultant. Hi, this question is for Harley. Uh, Harley, I wanted to ask you specifically about creating jobs for veterans who are coming home from um, the service in other parts of the country and the world. How do you specifically plan to create these opportunities for our veterans and ensure that they are placed as they're coming home from duty? First, you have to create the jobs, and it's actually an extraordinarily simple process. You attract businesses by going to them, asking them what it would take for them to move to Nevada, use your consensus building skills to get the legislator to pass the laws to get them to come. That's the first thing, you have to have the jobs. And favoritism should be given to veterans or some sort of system or something correct the system. Because they served our country and they certainly have a right to the job, but first you have to have the jobs. Okay, next question will be closed by Jay Jerome. Okay, this will be a simple yes or no question. Would you be for or against, uh, say yes or no, I'm actually, let me reword, let me reword this question here. So it'll be a simple yes or no. Uh, are you for providing uh, tax breaks and, uh, towards uh, private schools and uh, academies to open up here in Southern Nevada? Yes. Yes. Yes, I am. Sorry, what was the question? Are you for um, tax breaks and, or, and or incentives for private schools and academies to open up here in Southern Nevada? No. Yes. Next question will be posed by Juanita Crefferton, founder for the Shine Family Foundation. This is a simple yes or no. Would your uh, religious beliefs affect your decision making? No. Yes. 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 No. The next question will be posed by Dr. Danielle Dubre, a holistic doctor. Thank you. This is question is for Sue Loudon. Coming back to the uh, tourism for natural health, uh, the good natural health, how would you go about implementing it? Well, I think we need to be a center here in Nevada where people feel that they can come here and we have specialties in, in uh, certain expertise areas like natural health. Uh, as I, I was saying to Dr. Brooks that I believe we need a medical school here in Southern Nevada to uh, be a spoke in the wheel of, of uh, medical tourism. I think you're talking about holistic, but I'm looking at a bigger picture of all the different things that we could possibly do here in Nevada, but particularly right now in Southern Nevada, you look at the Alzheimer's Clinic and the success, I think some of the best doctors and some of the best equipment in the world here that people are coming from all over the world. So if we become expertise in certain areas, whether it's holistic, we already are uh, have an expertise in, in uh, brain injuries, if we could pick out five or six areas of expertise, we could be uh, an area where people want to come. We know they already want to come here because we have the great hotels and restaurants and the things that, that attract people to come here. Okay, the uh, healthiest fellow in the room, <laughs> sitting between two doctors, Michael Dujour. <laughs> Thank you. Um, part of the duties of the Lieutenant Governor is the Vice Chairman of the State Board of Transportation. Um, yes or no, would you oppose a per mile tax on vehicles? I would oppose it. Opposed. Yes, I oppose that. Opposed. Opposed. Well, our next uh, question will be posed by Dr. Jasmine Brooks. This question is for Sue Lowden. How do you plan to attract international business to the state of Nevada 
given China and Vietnam is projected to be the economic tiger of the world? Well, it depends on which business you're talking about. I know that Bollywood, for instance, is looking at Las Vegas as a second location, not to relocate from, from India, but to come here and be uh, a second location. I would very much like to work with Carolyn Goodman, who approached me on this already and said that we are looking and courting uh, uh, the Bollywood people, not to be uh, confused with Dollywood. I said this somewhere else and someone thought I said Dollywood, meaning Nashville. I'm talking about um, the film industry in India coming here. So it just depends on the industry that you're talking about. But certainly uh, that industry would be a, a big hit here, not only in Las Vegas, but throughout Nevada. I'd love to shepherd the uh, film industry through our state and show them the beauty of um, the Sierras and the cowboy country of Elko. And you don't even need to go to Afghanistan or Iraq to, to film a, a war movie. Just go to Hawthorne, where it has the same terrain. Time up. Next question will be posed by Brian Bichon, an Army veteran. Yes, this is for everybody again. This is for uh, everybody again, and just yes or no. Um, Ms. Loden, you can go first. Um, do you think illegal immigration is drastically affecting Nevada right Yes. Is it illegal immigration? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Drastically, no. Our next question will be posed by Officer John Shoot Jr. from Metro. Um, this question is for Mark Hutchison. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, it seems like a lot of local politicians, especially down here in Southern Nevada, think the answer to our economic woes is more and more bars legalizing marijuana, and they're doing this at the cost of not caring about the individuals that are being hurt and addicted in Southern Nevada. What is your opinion on that? Well, I'm completely against the, uh, the legalization of uh, marijuana for recreational purposes. I don't think that uh, that uh, benefits society. Uh, I was a supporter of the medical marijuana because it's a constitutional right. Uh, Nevada's voted for that, and in our Constitution now is the right for medical marijuana, but recreational medical, uh, medical uh, marijuana or, 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 or other illicit drug use is not going to be uh, something that I would support. Uh, and I would, I would uh, in general, uh, support uh, the drug testing of uh, welfare recipients unless, unless there's a prescription in a, in a valid doctor's uh, care involved. And that's what I was trying to say a little bit our, in our clue last time. I was concerned about veterans uh, and others who are under a doctor's care and then somehow be disqualified for government benefits. As long as we can take care of that, I'd be in favor of, uh, of testing for welfare benefits. Thank you. Thank you for the response. And uh, another question now from Karen Steelman, the Auxiliary Director of Veterans and Politics. Hello again, everybody. Um, quick yes or no for everybody. Do you support promoting or advocating for illegal immigration? No. Do you support illegal immigration in any way? No. 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 Thank you. All right, we have time for one more round of questions from the panelists. Unless, Karen, we want to take questions from the audience. What would you prefer? Yeah, there's somebody in the audience wants to. Anybody in the audience would like to ask a question, why don't you approach the back side of our cameraman there? And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take the initial question from. Um, uh, All right, please say your name, sir. Hello, my name is Tom Jones. I'm the Clark County Chairman of the Independent American Party. And I wanted to ask Mark Hutchinson, you indicated that you voted for the Silver State Exchange uh, in order to give the state control, but it seems to me that with the federal government spending over $2 million on it for a couple years, and uh, then the state having to be responsible for that, with the sad failure of it so far, haven't you put the state in a serious condition financially? Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Tom. Uh, I didn't vote for the Silver State Exchange. That was a uh, legislation that was passed in 2011 before I ever got to the legislature. Um, so I did not vote for it. Every legislature in the building did, though, as did Brian Sandoval signed that. And the reason they did that, at least what they said and articulated, is, is that you could either do one of two things when Obamacare passed, and then with the help by the U.S. Supreme Court, Either the Nevadans could control the provisions of that law, or the federal government was going to do it. Uh, in 2011, Nevada chose to, to deal with the law. 
No, it's, has it been, has it been uh, pretty? Absolutely not. Why? Because the law is ill-conceived. The law is misinformed and misdirected. So um, I think you're seeing the effects of that law now sort of come crumbling down. Uh, but still, overall, my philosophy is let's have Nevadans control that process. It's a bad process. Let's have Nevadans control the process. Or the federal government's going to do it. Those are the two options. If anybody tells you otherwise, they don't know what they're talking about, and they don't understand the law. So those are the two choices. The best thing to do is to exercise our Tenth Amendment rights and to control it at the state level. Thank you for the response. I'd like to remind our guest questioners that you're limited to 30 seconds on the question. Complex questions get thrown out, and if you want a yes-no response, you may ask all candidates. Otherwise, direct the question to one candidate only. Quick question. Uh, yes. So I can say your name. Uh, Eddie Hamilton Henderson, Sue Loudon, and Mark Hutchison. What do you think about the uh, role of the militia in the uh, cattle battle and bunker building battle? Yeah, let's let's give all five candidates an opportunity okay. to respond. Karen, do you agree? Yeah. In a minute each. Just to be clear, was what is what do I think of the role of the militia? Do you think the militia? consisting of combat veterans of Afghanistan, Popo Hearts from the Pakistan War, do they have a role there to defend the Constitution? I know that it's a very passionate issue and that uh, everybody has a right to carry an arm and to uh, defend what they believe in. So as far as that's concerned, uh, I believe that everybody has the right to do what they have to do and they believe in. Um, but I'm happy that there was no real uh, uh, military action there and that it was resolved, at least temporarily, uh, in a peaceful way. I know the last thing that I would want to see is for um, guns to be cocked ready and, and, and shot. That would be horrible. So I'm happy that it seems, at least for now, that it's, uh, that it's peaceful, it's a peaceful solution, but everybody has a constitutional right, I believe, to carry a weapon. That, if that's what your question is. I focus on the cause of things, not the results. This is an embarrassment to the state of Nevada. The governor would have known full well what was taking place long before it ever hit the public and the media, and action should have been taken by our governor to alleviate this situation long before it ever got to where it has. Certainly people have rights, but not to a point of embarrassing a state. We have enough of a hard time getting people to want to move to Nevada with these negative things here. Just look like another Jody in our government failed us here in that. What happened in Bunkerville was a uh, manifestation of a much, much larger problem in this in this state, and that is that 81% of the state of Nevada is under control by the federal government. Uh, if that had been county-controlled land, if that had been state-controlled land, uh, you, know, you never ever would have got to that uh, level of, uh, of challenge that we saw out there. So, uh, as Lieutenant Governor, I am committed to leading the charge. And, and, and involved now in being the charge of getting the federal government to transfer public lands to the states where the states can better manage them, dispose of them, and use them to the benefit of the citizens. And we wouldn't have those kind of confrontations to begin with. Mark gets it half right. It's a manifestation of what American whole is feeling right now. It's disfranchised from your rights. Uh, and it's frustration. So you've got the tip of an iceberg. Believe me, that's just a handful of people in America that are, are moving away from the two-party system. Feel like they've been disfranchised they no longer have a voice in america and they're resorting to the worst of the worst which is, is basically anarchy and if we don't get back our rights and we don't open up opportunities to have your grievances heard and you have an oppressive government like we're, we're having an expanding government this is going to be common this isn't going to be an exception these weren't all nevadans out there these people came from all over the united states they represent every one of us they have, they represent our rights and they're standing up for those now, do I agree? Not necessarily. That's federal land as we know it, and that's under Article One. It's territorial law. Now, it should be an Article Three court, and that land should be ours. And our governor should have taken the lead to say, "Listen, we're going to move in at this point, and we're going to settle this issue and resolve this equal footing doctrine. We're going to put this land back, or at least we're going to start moving in that direction." That's where the shortcoming is. Shortcomings in government. And as much as I, I didn't agree, and I don't like having to sport guns by any means, certainly in a military fashion. This is this is frustration. This is this is about America. It's a time, big, big time, issue. Time, time. I agree with them exercising their First Amendment right to free speech and their Second Amendment right to uh, bear arms. I believe that what they did was let the federal government know that they've overstepped 
and draw attention to the fact that the federal government owns over 80% of the state, which is just ridiculous. So, uh, yes, fully support the militia showing up there. Okay, we will have uh, time for one more question. We have a member of the audience ready to go. Please, Hi. please state your name. Hi, this is Yvonne. Um, I have a question about uh, voting. Do you believe that uh, the electronic voting machines in the state of Nevada are reliable for the next election that you're going to be part of? For everybody, yes. 60 seconds for a response. Okay. I believe they're reliable. I've uh, never heard of any problems with our election machines here. They print out a printed ballot that you can see as it, as you're finishing voting. So I, I believe ours are reliable. As reliable as any technology is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen no evidence to uh, suggest that they're not reliable. I think we need to be vigilant in protecting our right to vote and make sure that it's, uh, the integrity is maintained. But uh, the voting machines so far uh, have uh, performed properly. At least as far as we know, there hasn't been any report or study to show otherwise. I've read extensively on the subject and read a book about it. It does happen, the machines are rigged, and it's very hard to find out. It takes specialists to be able to look at the machines and find out. The little short of it is, we're in an electronic age, but I don't quite trust those machines. I've heard no evidence to assume that they're unreliable. I, I would think that they're unreliable. Thank you. Okay. I would like to thank all uh, five of our candidates. I'll uh, give you all a chance to wave at the camera one more time as I mention your name. Sue Loudon, Harley Culkin, Mark Hutchison, Mike uh, Little, and Chris Dyer.